one phone booth that you can now purchase In its past life had served a dual purpose Clock Kent entered and Superman surfaced And later on Doctor Who controlled its circuits One bat cave that you can now lease Term is one year, then month to month Batmobile included and you don't need keys It's voice activated when you stand in front Hey everybody, this is another installment of Two Guys, One Toy Review I'm Darren Barbieri and this is Dustin Wood and today we're going to be talking about the Hot Toys Iron Monger from Iron Man 1. And this is MMS 164. Uh, pretty awesome figure. And uh, once again we're going to be judging in five categories. And uh, ready to get started on this awesome figure? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so here we've got the Iron Monger box. A uh, pretty basic box. Uh, the size of it is huge, but the design for the outer box is pretty cool. It comes with like, you know, the Iron Monger lettering and Iron Man, and it's uh, pretty shiny uh, silver lettering. Uh, cut Iron Monger on the side of the box as well, and then it says one six scale figure, and then the back of the box tells you who made the figure and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, and then the front piece also has the blueprint kind of drawing of the Iron Monger figure. Uh, overall, it's a pretty nice box. I mean, it's just mainly for function. The, especially, it came with a lot of styrofoam and protective stuff to keep the figure nice when it was being shipped. But uh, other than that, it's, you know, overall pretty nice box, but nothing too spectacular. Uh, you could use the outer box is like a display piece if you had like a big enough shelf but it's a pretty big piece to have it on there with the box so uh, overall we're going to give the packaging for Iron Monger uh, 80 out of 100. Okay so now we're looking at the uh, Jeff Bridges head sculpt that came with this Iron Monger figure and this is this is one that me and Darren really had to talk about. We had to think about what the perfect head sculpt would be to try to put this in reason just because it's so good. Like we automatically wanted to give it a hundred, but we figured like, is this the best of the best of the best? And you know, with that said, no, I mean obviously they can always, you know, do better. That's not us being negative, that's just the truth. But this is an amazing head sculpt. This is beautiful. Um, this is 100% Jeff Bridges. Right now we'll show you a comparison of Jeff Bridges in the movie and the head sculpt. I mean, look at that. It's pretty yeah. much the same. The same. same. Exactly I mean, that, the same. It's pretty insane. You can tell one's a toy because, well, you know, one is. But, and yeah. it would be creepy if you couldn't tell them apart <laughs> because then you'd have baby Jeff Bridges running around. Um, the other details on here, like you can see the beard and just a scowl on his face and the darkness under his eyes. Like, you know, he's been up all night trying to figure out how to outdo Tony Stark. Um, right here, when you turn the head to the side, this is one of my favorite details of the figure is the the beard. All the different shades. Like, this isn't just, they didn't just paint it gray. Like, they put brown and, and light brown and even a little bit of blonde texturings inside the beard. Like, it's really all these different types of colors all blending together to make it look like he's aging. It's beautiful. I love the beard work on this figure. It's just a great figure. Uh, Darren, you want to talk about some of the uh, other details on the head sculpt? Yeah, the, really the top piece here of the head... You can tell, I, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's just so much detail. I mean, there's little wrinkles on the front of his face, uh, almost like pores on the top of his head and veins that they included. I mean, it's just insane the amount of detail that they put into it. And like you said with the beard, like, it looks like individual hairs. Yeah. It's not just like a, pe like a plastic coating with you know, yeah. paint on it. It looks like individual pieces of hair on his beard and 
I think this head sculpt is incredible. I mean, the, the just the eyebrows, the wrinkles in the forehead, like I said, the veins. Even like his, t look at his temples here. Like they even yeah. did a shadowing effect on his temples just to, I mean, this is one of, for the money, this is one of the best, I think, painted and sculpted head sculpts you can get out there um, at, at the time. This is before, you know, really amazing ones like Loki and Thor came out, you know, yeah. but this is, this has got to be up there as one of the best, yeah, I think. it definitely know? is. Like, if you got a body and a suit, and you put that head sculpt on a true type body with a suit, it would yeah, look that's just, Obadiah like, Stane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like Obadiah Stane. It's incredible. And um, for those of you out there that have that exact idea, that's something that in the future me and Darren want to do is... There is an off-brand company, it's not Hot Toys, that sells the actual costume. And it even comes with a cigar. Um, and it's the suit he wore in the movie, if you're interested in doing that. Um, it, it's a great thing. Uh, Darren, you, you want to tell them what we came up with for the score? Uh, yeah, for this head sculpt, we're going to go with a 90. We think it's really good. Uh, this particular one is really accurate to what Jeff Bridges looked like in the movie. We just don't think it's one of the best of the best that we've seen so far. Yeah, either way though, it's it's great and you're not going to find another accurate Jeff Bridges head sculpt out there from any other company. Yeah. Next up we have articulation and costume. Um, he doesn't really have a costume, it's more of a suit, kind of like Iron Man. So we'll call this one articulation and armor. Just, yeah. just for shits and gigs, as they say on the street, <laughs> at least in my hood. Yeah. Um, okay, so starting from the top to the bottom, Darren, you want to start with the head? Yeah, uh, the head has a little bit of articulation, not as much as maybe you would like, but it goes up and down, side to side. It is hindered by the actual armor around the neck, though, so it can't move too much, but it does have a little bit of movement. Yeah, um, also, um, the paint app on this, uh, on, on this entire figure, really, is amazing. It's got this kind of, uh, oh, I don't know how to explain it, kind of this textured... It's like a rough metal. Rough metal. Like, like a dusted metal texture. Yeah, it's and cool. it's so amazing because it's not just one flat color. You, you see a little uh, color of rust in there at times, like little orangey rust. And uh, blacks and, and, and gun metals and whites and silvers. I mean, they really did a great job. And all the rivets um, throughout this whole figure on the shoulder pad and all over. You'll see little rivets um, that they put in and welding points and stuff. It's really amazing. Um, next up, we have the uh, shoulders area. Now, before we get into that, we got to talk about these pistons, man. I mean, these pistons yeah. are amazing. The pistons are everywhere on this figure, and they really do, um, they're not just there for looks, they contribute to the articulation. They are the articulation on this figure. For example, on the shoulders, if you want to move the arm up and down, you have to do it, well, I mean, you have no choice. The piston moves with the actual figure, as you can see right here. Um, then the elbows, you want to move the elbows up and down, as you can see. The pistons move with it. They work with it. Um, then you got down on the inside of the legs here. If you want to pull the legs apart, which I recommend you don't do too much because these pistons aren't 100% stuck in there. There's no way of stopping it. If you pull too far, the piston will come out. And trust me from experience, it is a pain in the tuchus to put back. Yes, I said tuchus. I'm bringing it back. Then uh, down here with the knees, if you want to bend the knees, there's also another piston um, that allows you to do that. And then finally, all the way down here on the feet, the front part of the toes, if you want to bend those um, up or down, um, the piston moves with that. I mean, this blows my mind, Aaron. Like, it's yeah. so awesome. Man. There's, a, there's so many moving parts to it. Uh, like he said, it, it can be fragile in spots, so you have to be really careful with how you pull joints and move the arms, because sometimes you get in spots where the pistons don't want to move quite the way they should, but for the most part, it, uh, it articulates really well. And uh, we'll talk about the hands now. 
the each individual uh, hand has jointed fingers. It joints in two spots on the fingers for each finger. And uh, I think that was really cool that they included that, you know, jointed fingers. And that way you don't have to switch out hands or anything like that. You can pretty much get any pose you want with the hands with those fingers. Yeah, it's really great. They took the concept from the uh, Iron Man figures and they perfected it with these. And and I think it was a little bit easier for them because it was only four fingers, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, they really did a great job. These things work great. Now, uh, one thing I recommend you do with the articulation is really... Before you decide to go into any hardcore poses, go through, find every point of articulation, and really work the joint in, you know, like uh, move the arm in and out and stuff like that, and really loosen the joint up, because otherwise you're going to run into some trouble like we did the very first time we bent the foot, um, a panel down here in the foot area fell off. And the very first time we moved the shoulders, it wasn't glued in all the way, and the actual um, piston, the head part of it popped out. So that's something, just be very, very careful with this and make sure you read the instructions. Otherwise, um, you got one broken monger. <laughs> no one likes a broken monger. Yeah. Also on the hands, I uh, forgot to mention that this plate on top of the hand, there's actually a little plate that articulates, which is really cool. <laughs> I mean, it, they so didn't awesome. really need to do that, but they did put that little plate. <laughs> and that's in there. why I love this. It's so freaking amazing. Like, who who's complaining about not enough articulation on the top of the hand? Yeah. Like that's so amazing. Like they, it just shows that Hot Toys they listen to us and they care about us. It's, it sounds like I'm talking about a cult. <laughs> All hail Hot Toys. Okay, so next lighting. Yeah. Yeah, um, the lighting features on these ones, the, um, now the arms is pretty standard. It's actually easier than the Iron Man's because it's not all the way up in the armpit. Um, what you want to do is they're on the inside of the arms here, uh, right actually on the wrist. And it's just a little switch that you press. And voila, you got, you know, you got light. There you go. Um, these ones are, um, they're pretty bright. And um, the really bright one is the one in the chest, which we're going to show you now how to do. What you got to do is you got to turn the figure around and open up this back panel here. When you open up the back panel, you want to flip the switch. And as you can see, uh, the switch is there just like all the other ones. And when you light it up, unlike an Iron Man, it lights up not just the chest, but the chest and the head. And uh, there you go. Turn this back around. And voila, there you go. The chest and the eyes light up at the same time. And as you can see, it's amazing. That chest really lights up. But I will say, and maybe you agree with me on this one, Darren, unlike the Iron Man ones, the chest isn't so overpoweringly bright. You can actually see the details looking straight on. And another source of light is, uh, Darren, you want to talk about your side, the uh, machine gun? Oh, yeah. There's a little light on the machine gun. Uh, as well as a cool feature for this is the machine gun slides in and out, which I thought was really awesome. Uh, a little tiny light right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, it does light up. And the belt, the actual ammo links are really nicely detailed. I like that a lot. Yeah, and then on my side, I'm not sure if you can see it either, there's a bunch of uh, missiles. Um, it's a missile launcher on the side here. And it also has a targeting light. And it's just... It's so awesome. You look at this thing and you think it's going to have light up eyes and chest and hands and that's it. And then you realize that there's these two other sources of lights and it's so surprising when you first, um, you know, put the batteries in. And this does come with batteries, but like we've said in previous reviews, we recommend you take those out and put your own in. Because Hot Toys may care about us, but they don't care about the crappy rink and dink batteries they put in their figures that blow up. So... Definitely yeah. replace those batteries. Anything with batteries, change them out. Yeah, even in your bases. Trust us. Um, so, yeah, um, that's uh, other pieces. I mean, there's so much articulation, and if we missed any of it, we're sorry, and please talk about it in well, the comments below. Talk about um, the waist articulation. Oh, yeah, that's right. This uh, whole piece will rotate side to side. And it does actually have a little bit of an ab crunch, not much, but it does kind of pop up and down 
barely. Yeah, as you can see, and it's just so you can get the, that little extra, you know, quarter inch when you're doing a pose. And once again, didn't have to put it in there. They did it because they care. Yeah, and, it's and then uh, we'll talk about, we'll show you how to put the missile. Yeah, the in. missile in right here. What you want to do is you want to turn the figure around. And then um, on the back here, on the opposite side of where the light um, panel is, the very opposite, perpendicular to it, is a, another panel. And it just folds back just like this. And then what you want to do is um, not have the missile in and because it's easier to do that. And um, there's another panel up here right up above it. What you want to do is you want to take that panel and take your finger underneath and pop that out. Make sure that the arms are absolutely down um, by the sides because otherwise the piston will get in the way. Um, you pull that panel loose and it's got like a little um, spring hinge right here and it pulls back. And then you take two fingers and you grab it and you just pull it out. Not straight up, but oh, it's kind of slanted to the side. And it comes straight out. Then you take the missile, you slide it in, and you're ready to go. And I mean, it's really, it's a really great piece. I mean, look at that. That's great. That, I mean, what a cool little accessory. Once again, uh, well, I think that's one that they needed to put in there. Or people probably would have been like, Where's yeah, the missile at? They did. Yeah, I think that's one that they had to put in there. <laughs> I mean, people are arguing right now about Superman's waist size and the size of his arms right now. So, they're probably going to complain about Iron Monger not having a missile. Yeah. Damn hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Darren, you want to tell them what score we have for this? Yeah, we're going to go with uh, 95 on this one. We just think that there's so much that, I mean, most of it we couldn't even remember to show you probably. You just have to get it in hand and really move it around and see all the different movement that it has. It's just crazy. The detail in the cost or in the armor is awesome. All the the just the way it looks, the different shades of metal. Uh, it's just crazy. It's, yeah, it's a really, really awesome figure. One of the best uh, articulation or articulating figures that uh, we've seen. Yeah, um, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, so, next up is accessories, and uh, Ironmonger really did not come with a lot, but then again, me and Darren discussed that he didn't really need to come with a lot, because basically all the moving parts on him, he's one big accessory. So, uh, he came with the instruction manual, as you see right there. Um, pretty standard instruction manual. I do recommend that you actually read them, um, especially on this one because of all the working pistons and all the things that could go wrong, as we discussed in articulation. Um, he came with his head sculpt, which we went over in head sculpt. It's a beautiful, amazing head sculpt. And there's the missile that we went over in articulation as well. Um, Another accessory he came with was the actual body inside the cockpit of the Ironmonger was so detailed they put the actual clothing on, the straps, and then they put this little necklace that he wore in the movie, which they never explained what it is. It's just this necklace with some kind of blue um, gem or ruby on it. And then these back here are the thrusters, the flight thrusters, and they... There are two little holes on the back of the legs, the back of the feet, and they plug right into those, and then you have to pull another part of the thruster down that's actually attached to the leg. And uh, they're really cool. Um, the only issues me and Darren had was we figured for the price that you pay for this thing, uh, they really put a, should have put some kind of color detail right in here in the actual part where the fire is supposed to come out. Um, or even like the thing that came with the Mark 1 2.0, that little fire um, accessory that plugs onto his arm. Like, why couldn't they do four little tiny ones that plugged into those? I, it's not a big deal, and it's not something that, you know, made me dislike the figure. The figure is amazing, but uh, it, it was just something I thought. They do have really great paint detail on them, though, the rust, and you can tell, like, where the fire actually came out. It's darker, like it burned darker, and it's really awesome. 
So after talking about it, uh, me and Darren came up with the score we're giving for accessories is 75, which is a little low, but at the same time, when you're you, it's hard to be impartial and not think about other figures when you're doing one. So it's hard to give this a high score when you have a figure like the 2.0 Joker or the 89 Joker or DX Luke where it came with so many accessories you, you know, you, you can't even remember. It came with a whole other body. <laughs> yeah, it came with a whole other figure. So um, this one we're giving it a 75 out of 100. Okay, so now we're going to talk about value. Um, overall, it's the value is okay for this figure. There's a lot of the actual figure itself is incredible. The amount of movement, articulation, like we showed you earlier. I mean, it's just insane. All the moving pieces and parts, all the little details on the actual figure are really amazing. I think that the for the price, they could have maybe included like a base or maybe a suited body for the Obadiah stain head, just something. Because, I mean, you're looking at a figure that's going to come out like Hulk for $300 and they're about the same size and this one's like $450. So, you know, and that was before they sold out. So now who knows how much it's going to be. Probably $550 at least. But... I think overall it's a great figure. Um, the accessories are a little lacking, I guess. I mean, I don't know what else he could have come with, but for the price, I think we should have got more. And uh, we just threw Iron Man and Black Widow in there for so you could really get a good size comparison because Iron Man's a pretty average size 1-6 scale body, and Black Widow's one of the shorter 1-6 scale figures, so... You can really tell how much bigger this figure is than the regular, than the uh, standard 1 6 scale 12 inch figures. And uh, I think for value, we're going to give it a 70 just based on uh, the lack of accessories. And I think they could have done maybe a little bit more uh, for the price. All right, well, we averaged all five scores together, and the final score for this guy right here is going to be an 82, which uh, is a little higher than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. L well, I don't know. I'm not too surprised. I think it's pretty, pretty good figure overall. Yeah, I love it, man. So, uh, okay, well, thank you guys for joining us again. And I want to say thank you for all of you guys that um, watched our video, liked it, commented on the last one. The response was amazing. Uh, you can catch us here on Two Guys One Toy Reviews, or you can catch us over on um, Ultimate Collector's YouTube page. Which yeah, big ups to those guys for hooking us up with a yeah, spot. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate the opportunity, and we promise we're not going to let you guys down. Um, next time, uh, we're going to be doing a review on the Avengers Hawkeye. And then after that, the next videos will be from San Diego Comic Con, which we're really excited yeah, about. Yeah, really excited. Um, yeah, we're going to try to get videos up. Um, of, so when day one happens, we're going to try to get them up to you at either the night of day one or the morning of day two. Yeah, and as soon as we so. can get them up, we're going to get them up so you guys can check them out if you're not going and see what's going on, especially in the world of 1-6 scale figures. Yeah, we're going to try to we're gonna try to do a little bit of everything, but the majority of our videos are going to be on these bad boys because we're kind of obsessed. Yeah. So we don't really have a choice. Um, so, yeah, uh, make sure you check out our last review. Check out, um, thank you for checking out this review, and we'll be back soon with our other one. So, thank you guys again, and take care. Yeah, thanks. One phone booth that you can now purchase In its past life that served a dual purpose Clock hit, entered in Superman surfaced And later on, Doctor Who controlled its circuits One bat cave that you can now lease Term is one year, then month to month Batmobile included and you don't need keys It's voice activated when you stand in front I believe in movies, comics and TV Truly and absolutely, they all for a small fee I enter the picture through a hole in the camera Searching through those dimensions, returning with memorabilia
Netflix and TV Truly and absolutely They asked for a small fee I enter the picture Through a hole in the camera Searching through those dimensions Returning with memorabilia